Hello, Norway, or oh, world. Anyway, I just made a short video, as about a half an hour, about how to uh, make uh, skin tones, and how to use how I use the palette and which which colors I use and how I mix them. Uh, I have gotten a lot of questions about that, so I just want to make a short video that is to the point, so you can actually start to understand more about how to think when you paint. So, yeah. Now, remember to share and subscribe. Share my videos and subscribe to my channel. It's very important. It's also important that you put on a notification bell. You put them in your playlists and share it on social media and all these things. It's also nice as more of you could actually become a $1 patron or a $5 patron. Remember, there is a monthly painting that is uh, given to one of my patron uh, patrons so uh, uh, for five dollars so um, go there become a patron if not keep watching sharing and uh, enjoy the video hope you learned something stay okay, okay, okay. yeah uh, I get this frequent question about which colors I use when I paint a face and um, um, I thought I'm just gonna show you a little bit with this and explain a little bit with this tiny painting uh, first of all I have to build this is just a rough sketch but first of all I start to build the griselle as they call it but I use color when I do and then I have to start building all the all the different shadows and stuff and I use I'm going to show you my palette I'm just going to paint a little bit now and I'm going to uh, show you my palette while I'm painting and then back to the face and maybe back to the palette again and uh, uh, a face doesn't have one uh, skin doesn't have there is no skin tone color you have to uh, use the same rules as in nature when light hit hit the skin usually the lighter parts are in the reddish or orange and as the shadows uh, as you go down to the shadows you've got the blue and you got the deeper into the shadow you get you get maybe green and you get the yellows and you get everything and the, and the colors that I actually prefer to use is among others uh, French ultramarine uh, it is cobalt blue and uh, I use a color called to break up the you know like in here it is quite bluish and yellow it has kind of a depth there I'm going to talk more about the colors when I show you my palette and then I go for the more green but I cannot mix I both mix my colors on the canvas and a little bit on the palette. It depends what I'm doing. If it's a it's a big rough sketch or a landscape or something like that, I actually blend most of the colors on the canvas. If you're doing more detailed work, you have to do some of the blending on the palette, but also on uh, also on the canvas. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I do, I try to keep the colors clean. It's very important to me to keep the colors clean. Uh, two colors that create a very nice bluish or violet blue. And then you can add some cadmium green and the cadmium yellow into it. And some white maybe. <laughs> And you start to get this more um, deeper 
greenish reddish thing I'm gonna just push it down here a bit because there's a shadow going in there now in the in there now I'm gonna use my cup lock or the alsaline and some cobalt blue I can also see there are some greenish in there and what I need then is actually my my Naples yellow. Uh, Naples yellow uh, is nice because it's kind of a broken, quite broken, uh, yellowish kind of color. That is good to tone down. There is a nice, it's a nice. Uh, green if you put some blue into it if you put some red into it it goes through to the reddish scale and i just keep on kind of molding i see there's some more blue in there uh, i remember this is just the beginning of the sketch there's a lot of work to do here but I thought I was just going to talk a little bit about what I actually do. Uh, it's also, remember, in the brightest, where the, where the sun hits or the light hits, you get the warmest. That is also because it's the part of the... Where, where the light hits first is usually on the highest levels that the, and that's why you get shadows so so um, uh, actually if the if the sun hit here maybe there would be a shadow there and light on this side uh, so you just have to try to notice where uh, the light hits and well, as I say in the brightest you have the warmest colors well that's my experience anyway but that's where all the warmth is and uh, you just keep building on that notion now this girl has very nice cheekbones uh, and uh, there's a lot happening here that will later explain her face. I'm actually making a full tutorial of this painting, so you will get to see the result when it's done. This part of the video will not be in that one. This is just for for this segment about painting a face. Maybe I should try to focus a little bit on my palette now when I paint so you can actually see what I'm doing actually it's very liberating for me to work this this um, small because usually I do a lot of huge stuff and uh, I tend to it tend to take me a while <laughs> It's all the small things, like she has a shadow here. So what color is in the shadow? That is how you have to think. If you see here or here, you see there's reddish, and then it goes down into the green. And then the shadow is falling on something that is reddish in here, or, or orange. And the shadow is actually a little bit violet. And that is because they're in violet there is some... Uh, red which then becomes a complementary contrast to to the greenish that is in her nostrils if you get my point here so after a while when you think like that and you keep building you will actually see these things it's a very tiny painting this so it is nothing 
that to fuck it up, you know, it's like, wow, <laughs> you touch it and then boom, you change the whole thing. And then the good thing then is that I can go in with clean color and I can kind of pull it up again and then push it down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, and nostrils inside of here. There's a lot of stuff I have to correct, I see that, and also this camera gives it a kind of a uh, wrong perspective. I, I would like to buy myself some equipment so I could have the camera like here, but not come into conflict with the stuff that I'm using. So just see if I can... I can find money to do that soon, so I can make better videos for you. And that will, of course, means that you have to become my patrons, so I can better myself in my video production. <laughs> it's all up to you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to fill my palette for a while and then go back to the face so you see what I'm doing on the palette so I can explain to you which colors I use. Okay. Okay, here we are. The palette. You see I'm using a smaller palette now to do this. I uh, also use this small, beautiful uh, brushes from Da Vinci. It is a bristle, boar, bristle, pig, pig's hair. Uh, I like that because it gives a very nice texture. But I also like these synthetic ones, also from, I think it's also from Da Vinci. I use basically Da Vinci these days for some reason. I kind of found that. Now you have this small. This one, it comes in packages. I wish I could buy them loose because I spend many of these. Uh, anyway, what I was talking about, this is, um, what is it called? It's a pr Brilliant Gel Ruddish, uh, yeah, Brilliant Gel Ruddish. Uh, and that is um, a Brilliant gel, gel Light, Yellow Light, Brilliant Gel Yellow Light. And that is Naples Yellow light and that is naples yellow there's cadmium yellow that is um, a cadmium yellow lemon kind of cadmium and that's cadmium lemon cad cadmium um yeah cadmium dark or whatever and that is cadmium orange vermilion and you have um, uh, the of course um, uh, cadmium red and you have the Alsarine I'm talking about. This is a Prussian blue, cobalt blue, and French ultramarine. That is burn, uh, burnt umber, raw umber, uh, Van Dyke brown, and um, uh, burnt uh, sienna. And now that was burnt sienna and burnt raw sienna. This is burnt umber, and this is raw umber and black. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's uh, ivory black. It's all, it's all uh, Old Holland. I really like Old Holland. They have a thickness to it. When you kind of drag, you can see when I, I like the fact that when you take some yellow and you put it into the red, actually, when you use these bristle pencils, you kind of becomes a micro, a micro uh, impressionist, um, Thing because you're not actually mixing the colors together, you're kind of just uh, putting them on top of each other or inside, like in the stripes and stuff. So that's what I do right now. I'm not going to use this one, I'm going to use the synthetic one that I was using. I hate when it starts to the bristle starts to, yeah. Be ruined. But anyway, 
So what I do, skin highlight, I might use some uh, vermilion or some of this and I just do like this uh, first. Uh, maybe I want to put in some yellow to get it a little bit orange and then I put it on the canvas in a light area. I might put in some highlight because over time, despite that I'm gonna paint over and over this many many times, I put in highlights again and again and when I when I When I do the glaze and I start over again, this texture starts to create the sculpture effect that I'm after. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper, so I take the, the uh, Alessarine and the Naples yellow, which creates some kind of a uh, broken orange type of... of uh, and I just find where that and then I can take some blue and I can put into it and I can get towards the blue and I can take even more blue as I want to go deeper into the shadows and but it's, it keeps that kind of greenish type of uh, feel to it so yeah you see I do like this usually I, I don't mix so much as you can see I don't mix so much medium into the into paint I do like this and then I take the color so I'm actually painting quite dry uh, if you paint too wet it's gonna become very oily and it's gonna be ugh, kind of hard to deal with uh, what I've been noticing during the years I've been painting is that the oil is going to get into the paint anyway because you keep repeating the same patterns and every time you stick in here do like that you get some of the oil into there you clean it and you take new color and also you don't want to I'm going to do some some reddish stuff here uh, Yeah, that was a little bit too much, so I go back here and I pick up this and then I go back to it and and that's how I do. I kind of tone stuff down, I go back and forth to until I basically find the right hue and the right color as I Paint. Yeah, that's what I do. And this is very small, very fun. Um, yeah. Now, I'm not gonna. I'm not using so much of these colors while I'm painting. Now, I'm staying on the light side or the the more. Uh, the light colors you see I'm using basically the color circle remember there's something that is very important if you take blue and you take this you get green okay and the more blue you add the more green you get if you this one it gets quite dark then again if you take the Prussian blue which is the strongest one it's like whoa you can't get it off if you get on a close it becomes very vivid so there's a big difference between the different colors and uh, but if you want to want the shadow to the green you know what you're going to do to get the shadow to the green and this is what happens in nature with all complementary colors if i now take okay let me take cadmium red and i go in with this broken green and i do like Oh, sorry, it was too much. I do like this, then I get the shadow color to the green. And then I can vary it. If I want to have more, 
against the, uh, the against the yellow this will of course change accordingly because you you kind of the mixing is about one third if you have green you put in like uh, one third red now two thirds red and then you get the shadow color and this is happening all over nature the, it just uh, the the shadows in it, the the shadows in a in a cloud is basically this is what's happening in in the light in the cloud you have the red and you have you have some kind of variation of orange with a lot of light and that's why if you really look at a cloud you will actually notice that the light areas are always in the complementary specter. They're clean colors, usually clean like orange, yellow, reddish, and stuff. But not not all reddish or all green, uh, all yellow or all yeah. But to get the shadow, the shadow color of the what's in the hair, yeah, you have to go down to. Uh, say that this is orange uh, and orange is uh, complementary to what is it complementary to blue blue and orange so to get the shadow color you need to mix some orange and some blue so say people think it's gray but it's not gray it depends exactly what kind but this will be when you make a cloud this will be the shadow color since this is a cl pure color uh, if it's a pure orange you can use pure blue and it mixes in with the orange in the white so you get a broken a broken yellow not broken blue that actually is the shadow color and the more the deeper you get the more you add and if you want to go real deep you really need to put in some so this is how the specter works and this is how I'm using my palette when I'm not talking I can do this um, mindlessly <laughs> if you say I'm not I'm not actually thinking about what I'm doing because I've been doing this for so long so it's just an automatic thing for me and that is also how you create skin you do it as it should be anything it doesn't matter if it's a face if it's skin or if it's a cloud or it's a sea or anything it's the same rules it's the complementary colors and the shadows are made by the broken uh, complementary colors which are broken with the complementary color of yeah you know what I mean I've been discussing this now this is, <laughs> sorry my French uh, it's kind of hard for me to explain this good enough but I hope you get something out of it anyway if you wanna if you want a surface or painting to live you have to paint as nature does and pay nature only paints with pure color. There is no black, there is no gray, whatever that is. I have no idea what gray is. Oh, it's so, that cloud is gray. No, it isn't gray. It's a mix between the complementary colors and the tertiaire, or the third colors, the mixture of what's underneath and what's in the light. And this goes again in this face, and it is what is happening in everything in nature. And the day you see that, the day you see the cloud, the colors, you look out to, up to the sky and you see the colors. I'm not talking about the, the night sky because that is easy, okay? But the day sky, when you actually, most people think the clouds are just white. And that is why they are painting them white when they are amateurs because they don't know 
all the colors that are in this white. Yes, yeah, to make something live, you have to work on the same premise as nature. So, yeah. I'm also going to do a quite big garden painting soon. It's a lot of flowers, there's a lot of colors. And then I'm going to work impressionist and I'm going to also focus on the palette then. So you can actually get a feel to how I'm using the palette when it's a big palette and I'm just mixing the colors uh, faster. So yeah, I'm going to do a little bit more on the face so you can see. And uh, yeah, hope this is helpful. As I say, there are no such thing as a skin color. Everyone who tries to sell you a skin color, that's bullshit. It doesn't exist. So we are back to the face thing. And I'm gonna not this video is not gonna be that long. But now you see I showed you how I use that palette. Uh, you know, it's maybe more helpful for people to see some shorter videos you know she has a lot of jewelry everything all of this I will paint into this painting uh, so so again shadows greenish blue uh, the light areas the warm colors I really black in this isn't necessarily useful actually but it's nice to have it there because you can, if you if you use black you have to know how to use it if you overuse black you will kill everything I know actually quite good painters who are killing everything with their overuse of black and it just becomes stiff, unnatural, and dead because all the colors are just dying, and that is just sad. Uh, so be careful with the use of black. It is like this. I heard about Rembrandt once, and or well, not once, but many times, and he used. They say he only used black in the depth of the eyes. I don't know if that is true, but to create that deep, extremely deep uh, infinity look in the eyes, he actually used black there. And of course, if you don't, didn't use black anywhere else on the canvas, the eyes would actually feel like a hole, a deep hole that would just fall and fall and fall into it. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not getting done much uh, uh, sculpturing here, but the, the video isn't about that. And here you see underneath here, the light from here will always go up here and it can explain the cheek underneath there. Now I have a job to do with the cheek and the face and everything but I see that uh, I'm always scared of touching it because it's so small so tiny and I kind of like the sketch so but I know I have to kill it so many times to get to the point where I want because I want it to look like her I want it to be like this at least as close as I can. You also have to remember, I'm not, I'm not a photorealist painter. Uh, I'm not that good. And uh, I'm not that good technically. I'm not a technical painter. I'm more a painter's painter. So I just try my best. I didn't go to any school. I didn't learn how to paint. I went to an art school actually and 
but you didn't learn how to paint. Actually, and the only thing they wanted me to do there was actually not paint and do, do more conceptual art and stuff. But I always already had decided to be a painter uh, because I had this teacher in a drawing school, a one-year drawing school, and she, she made me fall in love with with paint and the classics and Munch, especially. Sick Pika or Sick Girl. Actually, I want to do a copy of that one or a rendition, or I'm also going to do some other ones of my favorites to my next exhibition that will be called The Art of Painting. I hope so. I want to do some uh, copying of or my version of one of the greatest paintings I know. Which is, of course, the art of painting of Vermeer, the night watch of Rembrandt. It's a huge painting in reality, so I can't paint it the same way. I was wondering if I'm gonna do a Sick Child of Edvard Munch, because that is also one of my total favorites. So I'll just see what happens. Now my hips are. Doing well after the first operation, I started to get my energy back because I'm not in constant pain. And when I get the second one done, I will be, I will probably feel like I'm 20 again. There is so much happening in her hair in this. There's so much happening. I can just keep working. And when I put on my music, because I'm when I'm talking to you, it's actually quite hard to get into that flow but when I put on music and I just go into my zone oh it is just the best thing I can do I mean if I should, I should picture myself an afterlife it has to be in being in that constant flow that being and not being this this constant beautiful flow with with a dopamine are in balance you are not high, but you are high. You are not too active, but you are really active on the right levels. On the right, yeah. So, okay, that was a digression. But if there should be any reason for me to paint at all, it is reaching that beautiful feeling that just gives me a sense of purpose in life. And everything. 42. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. Okay. You see, I have to do a lot of stuff on a nose and everything. But I will film when I do it in the video that will show you the whole painting process. So stay tuned. It will be out in not too far, I guess. I also knew doing a lot of other videos so remember to put the notification bell on and uh, help me spread my art well you see I have to oh, I'm getting into that Ooh. anyway I'm gonna stop now because I think I've explained what I wanted to explain and I hope you get something out of it uh, and I see you later. <laughs>